Brother Rich Kirkham was born and raised in Pocatello. I made all this up, so I like it. <laughs> 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 I was a he served a mission in Uruguay, Paraguay. He attended BYU, where he earned a bachelor's degree in business and a minor in Spanish. He later pursued an MBA at ISU. While at BYU, he met Kathy Young, a native of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who was also majoring in business. They were married in the Oakland Temple in 1980, and immediately started a real estate business together. You read like you read that like it was the Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> the 1980 was not that long ago. my time. So there we go. All right. Um, Brother Kirkham has served as Elders Corps president. I'll do it more lively. So it's not the Civil War. Um, uh, has served as the Elders Quorum President, and Sister Kirkham served as Relief Society President. They taught Sunday school together and served as State Commission together. Brother and Sir, Sister Kirkham chaired the Area Youth Committee and also chaired the Area 24th of July celebration activities for many years. So fun. That's awesome. They spent over a decade serving the University State, where Brother Kirkham was a volunteer mm -hmm. institute teacher, bishop, and State President. In August of 2020, Brother and Sister Kirkham moved into the Alameda Stake, where Brother Kirkham was called to serve as a stake patriarch, and Sister Kirkham called to serve as the patriarch's scribe. I think the Lord moved you into this stake, so we can have <laughs> They have four sons who are now all married and 12 grandchildren. They love the idea of being together both in time and eternity. Thank you for being here today. We are so excited to hear you speak. And and share and we when we are finished we will have a closing prayer and then go home from this last session and sister harrison would you mind giving a closing prayer thank you so much that's at four right at four o'clock and i'll be in the oh before actually you know well you can probably see but i will give you a okay. minute yeah. thank <laughs> you i'm running yes, so. well it's so good that you're here and you've had a great day yeah, because this is awesome. That this the conference. I've just heard so many good things, and uh, and I hope that you will be rewarded for being here too. That you can go out on a high, and it's certainly not my um, objective to detract. However, I will share some dad jokes. Okay, the <laughs> sweet. Okay, Sister Kirkham had to leave, and I thought I'm just going to try my material because you don't often get an audience. And, and the reason that I have these dad jokes is because patriarchs are fathers. That's the word means father. And so I figured that there must be an equivalent of you know dumb dad jokes. There's probably dumb patriarch jokes, right? And so here, here are some of my favorites. As a patriarch, I have gotten to know 23 letters of the alphabet. I don't know why. <laughs> Did you hear about the patriarch who broke his arm in two places? I gave him some advice and said, don't go back to those two places. <laughs> it was a patriarch who invented the hokey pokey. Unfortunately, he passed away, and of course, when they buried him, they put him in a casket. First, they put the right foot in, and you know the rest of the story. The patriarch went to see a physician. His physician, he had a strawberry growing out of his chest. The doctor looked at it, and he said, hmm, let me see if I can find some cream to put on that. <laughs> Come on, let's do it together. Oh, that was terrible. Okay, so, um, some of you might be interested to know that I have uh, put together a website, and the name of the website is mypatriarchalblessing.com. So if this, if this gets a little, you know, ragged, and you decide you want to tune out, just go to that site. It's not a, it's a, a private site. In other words, you couldn't search for it on Google, uh, but I have a lot of resources on there. Uh, wonderful conference talks, uh, books about patriarchal blessings, and other things. And I usually use this to help people who are preparing to receive a patriarchal blessing. And so there are some great resources there, and you're welcome to uh, browse that uh, sometime. We're going to talk about some of the things today that are on that site. I want to introduce my scribe, 
my little Nana White over here. And uh, I'll tell you, she is so qualified to be the patriarch scribe. We met at BYU in the business department. We were both uh, majoring in business management. And she could do shorthand. And it was amazing because she could just take notes as fast as people could talk. And then she could just transcribe it. And so it was like, wow, that's pretty amazing. And, um, and then uh, she would like take all my papers and correct them so they were like grammatically perfect, the sentences are right. And then she would type them out. Well, we didn't have word processors in those days. She could type perfectly. And so I just think she's so qualified to be a scribe, don't you? And she has all this great background. Um, as a scribe, Sister Kirkham will um, be with me when we greet the candidates to come to get blessings. And uh, we don't uh, have to um, interview for worthiness. That's the bishop's responsibility. That is one of the great blessings, by the way, being a patriarch, is that we don't have to worry about worthiness. Those who come to us, we know the bishop has already um, found them worthy for a blessing. So when they come, we come, they come to get acquainted. We like to think of it that, that, that we're helping them to get the jitters out because sometimes you get a little nervous about what are they going to say and you know, what's going to happen. Uh, and so we try to get them there so we can answer questions, usually a week or two before their, their blessing, and we'll just uh, sit together in the living room and visit. And um, it's really a wonderful time. We learn lots of things uh, from those visits. Uh, not that that necessarily helps me too much with giving the blessing, uh, because I never know what really is going to be said. But uh, one of the questions we typically will ask is what's on your handout? And that is, what are the blessings that you are seeking? Why are you here? What, what was your purpose in coming? And so I want you all, I'm going to give you all just a, little, a second or two to think about that. When there are so many great speakers here right now, why did you choose to come to this one? What is there about this workshop that is intriguing to you? And what is the, the hope you have in, in uh, getting that? Go ahead and write something down. Uh, and you can add to that as the class goes by. I know why you're here. You couldn't find another room to go to, right? This is the only one left. Somebody, oh, thank you. Somebody who um, would like to share what you have, could you just raise your hand and tell me why did you come? Why are you here? Well, I want to, my patriarchal blessing, I'm going to be honest, so don't judge, but it's short, and I'm like, there's nothing to say about me, I guess. I, I, you know, I just want to understand my patriarchal blessing better and how to. Yeah. Maximize my patriarch. I should have been your patriarch because I, I can never shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Kirkman is over there going like this, and they go on and on. And um, it is interesting. A length has nothing to do with patriarchal blessings, by the way. So President Hinckley, I think, I hope I'm telling the story right. But never let a few facts get in the way of a good story, so here you go. So President Hinckley, I believe, was 11 years old when he got his patriarchal blessing. His father called the patriarch to come and give blessings to all of his children. So the patriarch came and gave like six blessings, all at the same time. And Gordon was the last one. And in his blessing, which was a half of a page long, said that he would go to the nations of the world and bear his testimony. Okay? And he was called where to go on his mission? England. England. He went to the United Kingdom. And uh, so he got a chance to go to both, I think it was Great Britain and Wales. I, I can't remember, but there were two countries in the United Kingdom where he served during his mission. And when he went home, he thought, check mark, I, that blessing has been fulfilled, you see, because he had been to the plural nations of the world, you see. And who ever knew that he would go to literally almost every nation on the planet to declare the, the word of God? So we don't always know what sometimes just a few words mean. Uh, in Sister Kirkham's blessing, there's a phrase that says, 
The true patriarchal order will be a part of your daily life. And you know something? That never, that went right over our heads. We never thought that meant anything more than that we would govern our home by the patriarchal method. But about a year ago, that took on proportionately new meanings to us. We don't know. So I get, I get that the blessing, blessings can be short and sometimes disappointing in that way. Um, so hopefully we will maximize today some of those ideas. Anyone else share with us something you wrote down? Yes. Well, I didn't, when I got my blessing, I was 17, and Elder Phillips told me I needed to get a patriarchal blessing. I had no idea what he was talking about. I went and did that. This is Sister Phillips, by the way, Elder Phillips. Did you get the connection there? It was many years later that I figured out what an intimate communication that was from my Heavenly Father. And I still thirst to understand more. So the more I learn about that, the more I see and my blessing. The more I understand my blessing. You know, I'll tell you something that is so sweet for us because we get to see these all these patriarchal blessings. I, I didn't share this with the last group, but as patriarchs, we're not allowed to keep uh, copies of patriarchal blessings. So what I do is that that blessing happens to be mine, and that's my wife's. There's my certificate, and, and then these are the people. We take a photo. So this is all I have. But I go through this. All, th this is the lady that's the oldest lady that I ever gave a blessing to. She's 93. And I think... A couple of days later, I gave a blessing to the youngest person that I ever gave one to. She was 12. Um, but, yeah, this is a precious thing. And um, it, it is so intimate, really, these, these patriarchal blessings that we have and, and, uh, and, and what they mean. So when we get these blessings, sometimes you know, people are really anxious to get these, like in the mail, or we usually deliver them to them. And they think, like, wow, it's been 10 days, it's been two weeks, what's taking them so long? We are dissecting these blessings. We are going through them and we are cross-referencing, we are reading conference talks, we are looking up scriptures. We are fascinated by what's in their blessings. And it's just so amazing. And each one of you has a blessing that's like that, has layers to it. And you just start peeling layers and then you go, oh my goodness, there's a lot here. So, and maybe that's part of your thing, too. And anyone else? What did you write down? What do you hope to get out of this today? Hey, the rest of you can go. <laughs> I'll talk to you, too. Well, there are parts of my blessing that are unfulfilled yet. Okay, good. Yeah, and, and that, is, um, that is an interesting thing. We will talk about that, uh, about the fulfilling of of blessings that have yet to be answered. And why is that? You know? And how do I how do I deal with that? Anybody else? Yes. I was really curious about the tipping points in the tripping points, yeah. In the title of your Yeah, okay. Like, like things that would trip you up or stumbling blocks. Isn't it strange how princes and kings and clowns who caper and sawdust dreams and common people like you and me, we're builders for eternity. For to each is given a bag of tools, a shapeless mass, and a book of rules. And each must make ere his life is flown a stumbling block or a stepping stone. Our Heavenly Father wants you to have a stepping stone. That's what your blessing is for. And if there are things in your blessing that are tripping you up, that was never his intention. And as a patriarch, I can tell you I worry more about that than probably anything. Because I don't I want the blessings that we give to be a reflection of his love. Those blessings are a manifestation that God knows you and that he loves you. And usually, if you get that blessing when you're 15 or 17, there's no tripping points. It's usually years, years later when it says you will have sons and daughters and you haven't even had a child. And you're getting to the Sarah point where you're beyond bearing children or you've never married. And that becomes a heavy burden to carry. Well, we'll talk about that. First, we're going to talk about how we maximize blessings in the patriarchal blessing. Did somebody else want to comment while you're here? I think I saw another hand. Yes. When I 
received my patriarchal blessing. I was going to, I had a family that did not go to church. I was going to church. Okay. And when I went, it, I was in seminary. They start talking about patriarchal blessings. Somebody's going to have one. I didn't know what I was doing. I know I, I was probably 15, went to the bishop. Then I go to the, I walked to the patriarch's house. Maybe I was dropped off. But I mean, I hear people talk now about it being a big thing and families and that. I just, I think for sure I probably got dropped off. I have no clue. I have no clue what, or I just went in, they gave me the blessing, I walked home. And then, I mean, there wasn't anyone to talk to, there wasn't anything to learn about in church and so That was something different. I and mean, when I first learned, like, those are what? Garments? You know, when I was young, it's, I didn't have that in my home, so I didn't know what that stuff was. So it's just, to me, this, now I look at my blessing and go, oh, why didn't I, you know, why didn't I listen, or didn't, why didn't I pay attention type thing to a lot of it, but, mm -hmm. so, to me, yeah, interesting to, just to hear a patriarch's view mm -hmm. on a blessing. Sounds like a couple of you had a very similar experience. Which is, by the way, one of the reasons why we invite um, them to our house and we'll kind of discuss the sacred nature of the blessing and get to know us and understand. Uh, I think I rode my bike up to the patriarch's house. I, I really don't remember my folks being there. Well, mine was only a couple blocks away. Yeah. yeah. It's right here in the state. It's in the neighborhood. Yeah. So, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's so interesting. Okay. Well, um, let's talk about <laughs> how do we maximize the, 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 the uh, things that are in our patriarchal blessing. I'm going to be thinking about you, so I'm hoping the Lord will speak to me because your case is not unique. It's, uh, I, I think I, there are three or four presidents of the church whose patriarchal blessings are less than a half page long. And uh, President Elder Faust, President Faust, who was a counselor to President Hinckley, said, my blessing had everything in it that needed to be there. And I thought, wow, that's, that's awesome. Did you have questions? I, I met a missionary who was less than a paragraph. It was just like eight sentences, he said. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's the shortest I've ever heard. But I know it was hard for him because he felt like, what about me? <laughs> you know, yeah. I had no, I never heard it. I didn't know what to say. Well, it, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> they, uh, they, they don't give us uh, guidelines, per se. Um, but they, they, uh, do, they do suggest, they have a little handout. It's called Instructions to Patriarchs. And it's a document that's been produced you know, by patriarchs and by, over the years, with just some of the wisdom. Um, but there are, we don't have a lot of instructions. But one of them yeah. says that rarely should a patriarchal blessing be longer than two pages. And, uh, and so that's, if there's a guideline. But, but here's the fun, funny thing about it. We don't think in terms of pages when we have hands on heads. Right? We just think about well, what's coming, and, and the stuff comes, and the stuff comes, and when you're finished, you don't know if you've given a page or ten pages. It just, it just ends. It just stops, and you know it's, you know it's done, and it's really kind of an, an interesting thing because I usually pause just to see if there's anything else. I always tell people, I said, if, if I happen to stop during the blessing, I, it's, I have not had a stroke. Just pray for you <laughs> at that moment. That's a good time to pray for the patriarch. Yes. Um, you brought up stopping. Oh, this is kind of weird about my patriarchal blessing. Um, when they transcribed it, they forgot half of one of the sentences. Oh. And so it ends really weird. And I'm like, what? I'm like, I know that made sense when you told me because uh -huh. there was more to it. But now I can't even remember what it was because it was so long ago. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that that patriarchs have more advantages now because of uh, we, we have better technology to help us in terms of yeah he had one really old real player <laughs> like, it was like 1970s like and this was in the 90s really so old. it was like really <laughs> old <laughs> some um, of us are going oh. <laughs> I got my blessing in the 70s I was 17 and the, I remember that the patriarch went like this he went over to the, um, 
cassette recorder, and I remember because he used two fingers, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I was a kid, I knew how to use it. I mean, if you wanted to record something, you just went bam, like that, you know, and it would start recording. And he would go like that. And he put those two buttons, then he came back and he gave me the blessing. And then when he got down, he went back over like this and he hit stop. And, uh, and today, this is actually the first time I've done this, I thought, oh, I, I know my patriarch was the oldest man in the East State. <laughs> you know, he was the oldest, wisest man. And, and I, I, I thought, I'm going to just check to see how old he was, because he was born in 1911. He was 61. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 65. <laughs> when you're 17, that's the oldest human being on the planet. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it was funny, and, um, and I just thought to myself, wow, uh, when, when President Ali called me, I, I, he, here's, you might not know this either, it's kind of interesting, that patri the calling of a patriarch, it comes from the Quorum of the Twelve. You're not called by your state president. They issue the, the uh, they, they, they make the recommendation, the recommendation, but the call comes from the Quorum of the Twelve. And he extends the calling, and I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I just never saw myself as a patriarch. And I said, wow, I think, I think the patriarch is supposed to be the oldest and wisest man in the state. <laughs> and President Ali said, well, you are the oldest man in the state. <laughs> so I don't know about the wisdom part. I'm working on that, okay? Anyway, we, uh, we, we as, as patriarchs, I know are perceived as being elderly men that walk like this, <laughs> and so forth. And, and that's one of the reasons I take the photo, is because um, I want them to remember how young they were, in most cases, <laughs> and how old their patriarch is. I didn't have a photo of my patriarch, so I took one, and, or I didn't take one, I, I, I looked him up on Family Search, and uh, this is my, my patriarch right here. And that's the blessing he gave me, right there. And uh, that's how I knew how, how old he was, as I subtracted the day he gave my blessing and his age. Uh, we've talked a little bit about my patriarch. I want to talk about Sister Kirkham's patriarch. This is uh, Walter A. Gong. And he was patriarch in the Palo Alto stake when Kathy was, how old? 19. 19. He was much younger. There is a picture of or the Gong at that age. And um, this is, uh, I guess you would say the thing about Sister Kirkham's blessing that is so amazing is that um, I love Brother Gong more than anybody on earth. He is my favorite patriarch, um, one of my favorites, obviously. I love my patriarch, too. But he is the reason that we are married. And, and you say, well, how is he the reason for it? Um, it's because of the amazing blessing. I, my faith at the time that we were courting was not that strong. And I was very, very uh, reticent. Is that a good word? <laughs> to get married. We knew, like, like the second date, the third date, that we were supposed to be married. But I had, you know, I... A year and a half after that. Well, somebody, <laughs> somebody told me once that you should date somebody at least long enough that you see their bad side. And so for two years, we did <laughs> It never came out. I am still waiting to see her bad side. She just doesn't have one. And so I just thought that's impossible that somebody could be that good. But then I saw this, this blessing that uh, was given by Brother Gong. And uh, she thought that um, when you were how old again? 19. And we, we had been talking pretty seriously. Um, and uh, when the blessing arrived, I read it. And I thought, oh my goodness, I have never in my life seen a patriarchal blessing like this one. This is an amazing person. So he was the one who you know, kind of let me know that. Yes? So if someone on the street were to, or me, I were to read her blessing, Chances are I wouldn't see that magic. Do you think that magic it's, is magic? It's possible. I'll share one phrase from it. You know, the blessings are sacred, and so we usually don't talk about them, but this is a sacred moment. And I've asked Sister Kirkland if I could have permission to share this. 
because it really was the thing that made it, that kind of clinched the deal for me. And, and it, it spoke to my heart. He gave this marvelous blessing. I mean, it is really, really an unbelievable blessing. And at the conclusion of the blessing, he says these words. You are meant to live one of the most beautiful lives in the history of man's sojourn here on earth. Let that sink in. What, what do you think it's like, like to, to live with somebody who's meant to live one of the most beautiful lives? Well, I'll tell you what it's like. It's like living with an angel on earth. And it is like the most, I'm the most privileged person. And I, I even as a young man of 23 or 4, I recognized that. And I thought, I, I really want to be with her so I can see that future. That, and, and there have been no regrets. Well, once in a while, there's something that comes up. Okay? <laughs> once in a while. And I said, well, you see, you were meant to do that. <laughs> Doesn't mean you were going to. Meant to. No, it, it is so true. And she has such a beautiful blessing. And so I love Brother Gong. And of course, you might recognize the name. He's the father of of Edward uh, Garrett Gong, and so very, um, very dear to us, uh, these people. Uh, when I was uh, 17 and got this blessing, um, I'm going to just tell a, a kind of a quick story, and then I want you to kind of unravel it, unpackage it, so watch for a few clues that I'm fishing for here, okay? So uh, at, at age 17, I got this blessing, couldn't remember what it said in its entirety, went home, waited for the blessing to come. All I could remember was the feeling. Okay, could you describe for me for just a few minutes? Just put up there the feeling. Because I, I like to tell people when they come to get a patriarchal blessing, don't worry about all the things I say. We're going to write all that down for you. You remember the feeling here. I want you to remember God's love for you. Because you're going to feel it in here today like you've never felt it before. And I could remember that feeling when I left. And when, that, when the blessing arrived, I was so anxious to, to feel that again. And I read it, and I felt it again. And I thought, this is, this is great. I am going to read this blessing every week for the rest of my life. And so I, in those days, they put them on legal paper, you know. And, I, and so I stuck it on the shelf in my bedroom. And every Sunday, I would sit down to, to study the scriptures. I would get the patriarchal blessing, and I would read it. And I started noticing some patterns to it. First of all, it was kind of grouped in paragraphs. And I thought, well, what is this paragraph about? This looks like an introductory paragraph. What's this paragraph? Number two. I have 13 paragraphs. Number two, warning. Severe warning. Conditional language. Lots of if you are faithful kinds of things. Paragraph number two, okay? Goes on down through uh, paragraph on leadership, on serving a mission, getting married, several things that were very, very important to me. And then we come to the second to the last paragraph. The last paragraph he reserved for the resurrection, which I, uh, that, that's like the ice, that's a icing on the cake, right? That's the last paragraph. Second to the last paragraph, warning. Another warning, right? A whole paragraph of of you need to be faithful if you want these blessings. And it's like, wow, he got real redundant there with me, you know. And you know why? It's because he knows that, um, that I have a heart that's prone to wander, right? Uh, how is that beautiful hymn that talks about that? And how we are, are people who often will lose our, our way. And, and, and because of that, we may lose out on blessing opportunities or things that might come along. And so I got two really strong warnings in my blessing. Now contrast that with Sister Kirkham's blessing, and there's not one if statement in the whole blessing. Her blessing is not conditional. It's just absolutely unbelievable. Is that, in fact, uh, what's that one phrase that I love so much that's in your blessing? You say it is conditional, but I say it. Uh, well, I have to find it in here. 
And I, I love it because, you know, we think um, all blessings, by the way, are conditional. We know that. I mean, the Lord uh, says, I, the Lord, am bound when? You, you do what I say. When you do not what I say, you have no problem. So we know all blessings are, are conditional. Uh, but her blessing is just sort of neat that way. And, it, and there's this one phrase there hmm, that says, Your Heavenly Father wishes you to know in this patriarchal blessing how certain would be your election. How certain will be your election? That's really strong language. I mean, we all want to have our calling and election made sure, right? And he says, I want you to know. It is sure to It's fixed. You have it. Uh, how certain will be your election? There is conditional language. <laughs> Just so you all know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a comment there, and then end up to you. Okay, I have a quick question. In the program that's advertising your class, it says um, that you talk about tipping points. Tripping. Did you mean tripping as yes. catching Did it up? say tipping points? It does. Yeah, it does. Oh, and so oh, when she's sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I don't mean to, I didn't mean to embarrass you, but I did excuse, want to ask you a question. You don't have to come now. <laughs> Sometimes, I, but I guess I have a question for you as well. It's, it's sometimes I had, I have this one section in my blessing that seems to be very clear about what direction to go. But as I've, as I've matured, I realized that it could actually go many different directions. It's a quite a broad statement, actually. Um, and so... I was just wondering, I was kind of, when I saw that at uh, tipping points, I thought, oh, so that means it was something that could go either way, kind of, doesn't it? I, I didn't, I, I, I don't know tipping points enough to know that, but I just was wondering if, um, how you feel about that. If you want to stick around for the four o'clock, it's on tipping points. <laughs> 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 just kidding. Uh, well, you know, that's a very interesting thing. That, that was uh, just a foo by the way. So it is tripping points because almost all of us, when we get our blessings, let's just say we get them when we're 17 like I did, there's no tipping, tripping points or tipping points. There's no tripping points when you're 17. You know, everything's in the future, you know. But then the future starts becoming the past. And some of those things look like they're slipping away. You know, sometimes it, we'll talk about marriage and family and you're still single. Or um, that you'll have sons and daughters and you only have daughters or you only have sons. And so that there are things that, that have a tendency to trip us up. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. So we'll, we'll talk about those stumbling blocks and those tripping points. Because all of us have those, but we want to try to put that into some perspective. Okay, so let me talk first of all um, about... The, um, some of the ways you could maximize the blessing. So in the story, I was telling you that I read it every week, right? And then I went to BYU. And um, I was, um, got down there, and there was a guy in the ward, and he opened up his Bible, and he had a copy of his patriarchal blessing in his scriptures. And it was a little teeny thing. Well, mine was on legal paper, and I'm going, how on earth did you get that? It shrunk down like that. He says, Oh, you go over to the copy center, and they'll, they'll shrink it down. And so I went over to the BYU copy center, and lo and behold, they put, they put this together for me. My patriarchal blessing. And it fits in my Bible. Now, it isn't on a shelf anymore. It's, it's actually right here in my scriptures. Anytime that I wanted it. And I loved that. And I would, I would study it, and I would diagram it, and I would break it down, and I'd, I'd go through it. Then I went, I got called on a mission. My blessing said that, uh, he said, you will, um, you, will, you will be called to serve a mission, and you will find great joy with the peoples of the world. <coughs> peoples of the world, I thought. That sounds, like a, that sounds like a foreign mission to me, you know? And so I was waiting for that mission call to come through, and sure enough, I was called to two countries, Uruguay and Paraguay. And so I had this unique opportunity to serve the peoples of the world. But before I could serve, I had to go to the MTC and learn to speak Spanish. And I learned something in the MTC that I 
was kind of astounded by, and that was that you can memorize a lot of material. They had us memorize this entire book. And one of the things that we memorized was the Joseph Smith story, word for word. Now, I don't think they do that anymore, but in those days, you had to learn every single word in this book. And, and then every day you would review those with your companion, and you would go through those discussions. And it was sort of astounding to me uh, of how you can memorize things. And I thought, I think I should commit my patriarchal blessing to memory. That way I'll always have it with me, wherever I am. And you know what? It didn't take me that long to do it. I've been reading it every week anyway. And it was probably the best thing I ever did. Do you know why? Do you ever get a song stuck in your head? And it just goes over and over and over and over. That's what happens with my patriarchal blessing. I'll get these phrases that'll just go, they'll just go over and over and over in my blessed, in my head. And, and and of course they're beautiful. Unless they're a tripping point. If they are a tripping, maybe they're a tipping point. I don't know. But if they're a tripping point, then that's not a good thing. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But that was the, the next thing I did. I'm gonna stop this story right there. Let's kind of unpackage that just a little bit. Yes. My husband's picture of a blessing said something about going to the nations of the earth, and he went to San Diego. So when he got a San Diego call, in fact, he told the, the bishop, I'll go anywhere except Cal Southern California. <laughs> and I don't remember the other one, but anyway, he went to Southern California. And the, the population there is so diverse, he did go to the nations of the world. All right. Wow. So, yes. Can you be a member to get one? Yes. And why do you think that is? You have to be a, a member of the church to get it. Yeah. Uh, it probably has most to do with um, being a um, descendant of, of Abraham. And that's part of the reassurance of that. And we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. And so let's, let's wait to get into more of the Abrahamic thing here in just a minute. Um, now, anybody can receive a blessing. And any father can give a blessing, so that's that's a possibility. But patriarchs generally they reserve the right to declare lineage to patriarchs or being patriarchs. Okay, so uh, let's unpackage th that little story I shared with you. What are some of the ways that you can see from my young life that I tried to maximize my blessing? Reading it weekly. Good. Reading it weekly. Good. What else? It's all, I, I think when you hear phrases like that, that it's actually like your personal scripture from Heavenly Father. I love that. So, per, it's that your personal that. scripture. And if you have that so. approach and attitude to it, it's, it's really, you, you reverence it more. I love that. Thank you. Yes. You didn't just read it. You dissected it to look for the warnings, the mm -hmm. encouragement, the whatever, so you knew how to use it. Good. Yes. It really was. I really broke it down and I really pond, I ponderized right, all those parts. What else did I do that you picked out of that? You were continually looking for more ways to do it. Yeah. You figured out how to get it into your scripture. Uh, there you go. Good. I didn't do everything. What else could I have done? Or what <coughs> maybe didn't I mention in the story that you can do to maximize the promises in your patriarchal blessing? Could have prayed about it. Praying. Thank you. I'm glad you said that because... Really, that is such an important part of it. This is Heavenly Father's blessing to you. You need to ask Him, what does this mean? Why is this there? What do I do with it? How can I fulfill that? Right? Okay, good. I think something that I really lack that I need to fix, that maybe you could have done, is... I don't um, do all the things it tells me to do all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, it tells me to keep a journal. I haven't kept a journal for a long time. Those things, if you really want the blessing, you really have to take the and apply it in your life consistently. Yeah, very good. Yes? You could write, like, if there's the conditional statements, you could just see the if, then, mm -hmm. just to... And really I identify those, right? Because they are conditional. And, and what do I need to do to be living under the conditions that will make the blessing happen? Anything else that you could see in there? Now, I deliberately kind of didn't talk about my spouse's blessing because I was telling you the story from before we were married, right? But what about your spouse's blessings? For those of you who are married, not all of you are, of course, but if you have that 
part, how, how would that enhance your study of your patriarchal blessing? Well, sometimes it talks about your spouse and the spouses. <laughs> exactly. Maybe. I don't like to do that. I, I feel like he's got a way cooler blessing. So <laughs> I feel like a loser when I read him. Oh, let me tell you. That's, <laughs> see, that's the Sister Kirkham dilemma. And I love to lay claim to her blessings because she has such... A beautiful blessing. Okay. I, I saw him here, back there, and then you. I just think when I, I compare mine to my husband's, I try and put it together like you're cross-referencing scriptures, and it's like, okay, if this is here, we're together as a team for eternity, they should kind yeah. of blend, right, and, and get further insight that I didn't before. Beautiful. Yes. And that was exactly what okay, I would refer to. Yeah. Did, did, you, did you have a comment? Well, my husband never wanted to get a patriarchal blessing, and just before we got married, I asked him if he would do that, and he says, why do you want me to do that? And I says, so I can know what I can do to help you. <laughs> and he go. got the blessing. Wow. Well, this is just one of the ways you can enhance, you know, get, get more meaning. I'm not saying you have to do that, obviously, but uh, you don't have to do any of these things, but these are suggestions about how you might, you know, dig the gold that's in there, out, and refine it and use it. So those are a couple of ideas. Um, yes? This woman, uh, here in the front, I, I'm sorry that I don't know your name, but his coolness definitely is rubbing off on you. Like, I, I think that is it. Like, when you come together, that's part of the ceiling. And I, I think that you can fully embrace that. And he chose you. Well, thank you. I, I think this is... Uh, it is a really important synergy that is created there. I, I just wanted to throw that out there because a lot of times we, we, we tend to be real provincial in our view of our blessings, but you're living a, a life together. And so those blessings, they run together, they overlap, they intertwine. Yes. Well, I, and just listening to this conversation, I just kind of wonder, Heavenly Father sitting there going, Oh my goodness, I do not think that she is cooler than you. <laughs> I value you. I, what I had yeah. to say that day hey, was important. <laughs> you know what you know what I mean? But if my children were comparing themselves to each other that way, it would hurt my heart. Yeah, it would. Uh, we have very little time left, sisters, and I want to share, I want to get into this idea of the tripping points just a little bit. Um, I wouldn't say all of us. I don't think I have anything in my blessing that trips me up. Um, there are some things that have tripped us up in Sister Kirkham's blessing uh, from time to time. And uh, I, I understand a little bit about what it is. And so I want to speak to this just a little bit. And I'm going to do it because uh, by way of sharing a story, I'm going to read it to you because it's, uh, it's, it's really uh, my journal entry. And I hope that you can bring from this the point that regardless of what it says in your blessing, it is incumbent on you to be faithful, no matter what it says. And even if you think that the Lord can't um, fulfill the blessing, he can. But there is a scripture in Doctrine and Covenants section 9 uh, that says, if I can find it here real quick, the Lord knoweth all things. From the beginning, wherefore he prepareth a way to accomplish all his works among the children of men. For behold, he hath all power in the fulfillment of all his works. Yes, it is. Amen. Don't, don't ever take that from God. If he said it through the voice of his servant, you can claim it. And you may not know how. There was no way that Sarah and Abraham ever, ever thought they were going to have children. And it was such a miracle when it happened that he was 99, she was 89. He was a miracle child. And it was as if God wanted to say, you're not going to solve this problem. I am. Stand back and watch me. And so for those of you who may have those promises in there and they're not yet fulfilled, they can happen and they will happen if you're faithful. Abraham was. Now this story. Um, so, Kathy and I were down in um, down in uh, near Preston, and we drove over to Riverdale. How many know where Riverdale is? 
<laughs> Thank you, one person. No, few of you know. I didn't know where it was. We'd never been there. Uh, July 25th, 2021, Sunday, Riverdale. Today we visited the Riverdale, Idaho ward where brother and sister Maples gave their mission farewell. We don't know the Maples. We just happened to drop in. They are going on a mission to Nauvoo. That is amazing. I would love to go to Nauvoo on a mission. They have no connections to anyone in the mission. They don't know anyone special in Salt Lake City. They didn't pull any strings. They just opened their call and it said, you are going on a mission to Nauvoo. But the story of how they got to that point is even more amazing. Their family had a 15 year struggle with financial problems that never seemed to be solved. One day, it was a roof that blew off. Another time, it was a medical bill. Then a tractor broke down. Next, a crop failure. Some of their adult children borrowed money that they couldn't repay. The problems went on and on. Evelyn said, all of this nearly consumed us. We showed faith, but nothing happened. Sound familiar? Can you identify with this a little bit? After many years, Evelyn said to herself, do I even have faith anymore? The Lord will not answer my prayers. We will never be free from this bondage. I think we've all been there at some point where we say, he can't do it. Well, he can, and here's the story. It's a great story. In desperation, they turn to their state president. They ask, President, what can we do? What should we do? He said, Evelyn, faith is always the answer. Always. Faith is always the answer, sisters. Always. Faith. They left the stake office determined to have faith if they did not get, things did not get better. Time went by. 15 years passed. Suddenly, after 15 years of financial um, difficulties, their prayers were miraculously answered. She testified they received perfect guidance and direction. As she prayed, she said, it was as if I had a spiritual financial advisor who would tell me, okay, first pay this bill. Good. Now pay that bill. Good. Now do this. Now do that. Good. In two years' time, they paid off all their debts. They saved enough money to go on a mission. Their financial problems were solved. For them, it was an absolute miracle. She continued, If the problems had gone away earlier, things would have been entirely different than they are today. We would not have been able to retire like we are now and go to serve a mission in Nauvoo, like we are doing now. Most of all, we would not have developed the strong faith that we have in our Heavenly Father now. We will be far better missionaries and of more value to him in the mission field because of what we have learned about faith. She continued, and this teaching, this is really, really good. She said, if we cannot change the Lord's purpose, and if we cannot alter his timetable, then what good does it do to have faith? Good question. Answer, faith is to teach us to trust him. She shared an insight from Ether, chapter 6 in the Book of Mormon. She said, after launching the barges, the scriptures say that the wind blew. A wind? Yes, a furious wind. They were tossed about on the sea. Many times they were buried in the depths of the sea. The wind never ceased for 344 days until they arrived at the promised land. In a sense, this is what happened to the maples. Their prayer was that the wind would cease. If the winds would just let up for a while, they could get on top of their financial challenges, they thought. But the winds for them never did cease. What they eventually realized was that the winds furious though they were, were sent from God to teach them to have faith in him during their trials. What would have happened to the Jaredites? 
that they had prayed to have the wind cease, and the Lord had answered their prayers. They would never have made it to the promised land. Our faith is what unlocks the power of God in our lives. Fifteen years. That's a long time to have financial trouble. Some of you have been bearing, bur bearing burdens longer than that. Maybe with relation to your patriarchal blessing, maybe not. But the point of this is, it doesn't matter. What matters is your faith. And believing that God is who he says he is. That he can and he will fulfill his promises. And this is why every patriarchal blessing, and why I see myself, it, that, that it's like it's my turn right now to continue to remind everyone of the Abrahamic promise. God made a promise to a man who lived 4,000 years ago. And he continues to keep that promise alive by calling patriarchs to remind you that you are the daughters of Abraham. And you're entitled to his blessings, which are the blessings of the gospel, of eternal life. So, uh, I think we are at the top of the hour. I want to just leave you all with my love and my blessing today, that you might go home and further analyze your own blessings that you might find in there some of that gold that you haven't yet extracted. And for those little stumbling blocks, those tripping points that may be there, that you will renew your commitment to be faithful to God, and he will deliver. And these things I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.